many careers. I started with acting, then I went into advertising. I'm missing all the jobs to support myself in between. Then I was a sculptor for 20 years. I got burnt out and knew I had to do something. A uh, very quick story, came home from the grocery store. I was in a snit, came home. Friend happened to call, she's a marketer. I said, she said, what's wrong? I said, I wish I could teach these kids to say please and thank you and ask, not ax. And she said, well, companies don't pay to train at that level, but they do pay to train. I said, what are you talking about? She said, go get Dorothy Sarnoff's book, which had just come out, about never be nervous again. So I ran out, bought the book, read it, said, oh, I can do that, because I had worked with actors and non-actors in advertising, because I was a director. And I said, I can do that wrote the stupidest note I've ever written in my life, first bit of le learning. It was just, Dear Miss Sonoff, loved your book, may I come work for you. No curriculum vitae, no nothing. I, being alone as a sculptor, you get rather self-obsessed. And I ended up, she, she responded with a lovely note saying, we only hire people who have trained thousands of executives. I got huffy wrote her back a note, and it said, I've directed these actors, I listed some very famous ones, and non-actors, I know I could be trained, she didn't respond, I said, and opened my doors not knowing what I was doing. And that was in 1988. Well, first of all, oh, I was going to tell you, I oh, believe yes. I was, <clears throat> someone said to me, because I decided I'll call it the Speak Up program, because it would be easier to get on the phone and talk about how great the program is yeah. versus to say, I'm good, right? So I named it the Speak Up program, and someone said, you really better look up and make sure no one else has the name. Uh, being a totally myopic New Yorker, I looked in the Manhattan. In those days, there was a Manhattan telephone directory. I didn't even bother with Brooklyn and Queens. And... <laughs> I didn't find it, so I went ahead and used it, and three months later I got sued, because the name is already, obviously. So we made it Marco Krasny's Speak Up program. The reality is, there's not a program. It's my expertise in content, construction, audience needs, and the ability to present what you need to say in a way that's accessible to the audience, that is what my clients use. But I also made a decision early on, against a lot of advice, by the way. Everyone told me, or the people who knew uh, better than I, that, that if one is going to make money, one should have a program they could sell and others could perform. But to me that meant I would be running a business. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a coach that worked with the individuals. And my new clients came because I'm obsessive about the telephone. In those days I was dialing for dollars. Uh, I sent out a great letter which said, uh, would you um, attend the theater if your actors hadn't rehearsed? And then I got on the phone and dialed everybody over and over who I'd sent the letter to in advertising, because I knew advertising, so I started. I finally got someone to respond. Uh, they said, come work for us, you know, on a, a j one single job. I went and I spoke to people if I saw a young woman, because I didn't think it was right to go talk to men at that point, if I saw a young woman who looked like a professional woman, I found a way to start a conversation as we were waiting for the train and let her know what I was doing. And one or two sent me, because I was so cheap, I was giving it away in the beginning just to get 
started and to learn what I was doing because I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I learned the first few years in doing and working with different people and being obsessive. I will tell anyone who is starting something, you do not sleep, you breathe it 24 seven and you're in a constant state of anxiety. And that lasted for about five years until I realized this was real. And I had learned enough and from my clients, uh, I started to write a book. That took a number of years. Uh, it got published by Warner Books. Um, taught me an awful lot writing that book. And eventually built a business. But, but by and large, the basic needs to communicate, to care about an audience, to put yourself in an audience's shoes, to not be so self-obsessed that you're only thinking about yourself, uh, that hasn't changed. That's the basic. To have a voice that doesn't drive people crazy, to be able to listen to what people are saying and asking, and to rehearse. All of that is still there. It, it's, it's not changed. Um, where to start? Uh, I think the biggest learning, which took me a long time to really understand, was understanding someone else's reality. When you're dealing with an individual to really to be trying to put yourself in their shoes, his or her shoes, to sense what it must be like to receive the criticism. I think in the old days I was so intent on fixing that I forgot what it had to feel like to be fixed <laughs> and how awful that can feel. Uh, my favorite story, I'll give you one more story, is there was a gentleman who came to me. He was in the financial industry. He was enormous. He, he, I, I'll know he had a, a, so help me God, a silver suit on, because he was like from Vegas kind of area. He had a silver suit with a pink shirt, big guy. I was panic stricken because I, was, I worked alone and he just appeared angry and I'm sitting there praying that I'll be safe and fine and, you know, um, and I'm going like with a feather, a, a, you know, just tiny little corrections because I was afraid if I really did a big job, I would be slaughtered. At the end of the session, he said to me, that was the most daunting thing I've ever been through. And it taught me that whole thing of what it has to feel like. I mean, who would have thought a six foot something guy who was also big and broad and strong looking and came in with all this power would find what I called feather dusting daunting. And the only advice I pass on that was passed to me was it takes it takes time and it takes learning and it takes flexibility. And there were many days that I was ready to give up. And there were many nights I cried myself to sleep because I thought I was goofed and I, I would never get another job. And, um, and then found out you pick yourself up. I think just keep it going at this stage. You know, I'm 75. 